For lesson 1.1, we're talking about rational and irrational numbers, being able to identify them, as well as trying to estimate the value of some of our irrational numbers. So starting with the vocabulary, a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. That does not mean it's going to always be in fraction form already, but it means we could write it as a fraction if we wanted to. So that could include um, fractions. It can include decimals that stop, so terminating decimals. It could be decimals that, that have a pattern or a number repeats over and over again, so a repeating decimal. It could be written, it could be an integer, whole number, percent, any of those. And then on the other hand, if a number is not irrational, then it must be, sorry, if a number is not rational, it must be irrational. And that then would be a non-repeating, so it's a decimal that does not repeat, no number keeps repeating, has no pattern to it, and non-terminating. But that means it's a decimal that does not stop either. So it doesn't stop, no pattern to it then those are irrational numbers. And then square root, that's when we're talking about um, a number times itself. So an example would be if I have 6 times 6 is 36. So if I go backwards, that means that the square root of 36 is saying, what number did I multiply by itself to get 36? Well, I multiplied 6 by itself to get 36. On number 1, we're going to find the square of the number. So this exponent form tells us that I'm taking the base of 5 times itself 2 times. So 5 times 2 is what 5 squared means. And 5 times 5 is 25. I'm taking the base of 3 times itself 2 times. So 3 times 3 is 9. 7 times itself 2 times, 7 times 7, and that is 49. And the number 4, I'm taking 1 times itself 2 times, so 1 times 1. And 1 times 1 is still just 1. We're going to go backwards for the next set. We're going to find the square root. Before we do that, I think it is helpful to write off to the left-hand side here a list of perfect squares. It's going to help us solve these problems and other problems as well. So make a list of perfect squares. So I'm going to do this by going down my line. We'll go up to 10. So I'm going to start with 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So square root of 1 is 1. So I'm kind of doing it like I did our example here for the square root, how we did that. 2. 2 times 2 is 4, which means square root of 4 would be 2. 3 times 3 is 9. So square root of 9 equals 3. And I'm just going to keep on going. 4 times 4 would be 16. 5 times 5 is 25. And I'm going to go down to 10. So we've got 9 times 9 is 81. And 10 times 10 is 100. So there's a short list of perfect squares. Obviously we could keep on going, but these are the ones we're going to use most often. And that's going to make us easier to solve these next few. So square root of 16, we can find square root of 16 is right here in our list. That's 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 100, we can find that on our list too. That is going to be 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. Square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. The number 8 looks like it's going to be really hard because we're taking the square root of fraction, but if we just focus on the fraction for right now and ignore the square root, 50 divided by 2, well, 50 divided by 2 is really just 25. So really this says the square root of 25, and that is in our list. The square root of 25 is in our list over here, and that is just 5. So I'm actually going to make that note over here off to the side. On problems like number 8, we want to simplify first. So 
So if we can reduce that fraction or divide that fraction, simplify that first before you try to solve. All right, the next set, we're gonna determine if these are rational or irrational. So the only ones that are gonna be irrational is if it is a decimal that keeps on going and never stops, and it also has no any kind of pattern to it as it goes on. Everything else is gonna be rational. So number nine, number nine stops, it's 0.52 and that's it, nothing else, so that is rational, it's a terminating decimal. Number 10, this line here means it repeats. So that means that the six keeps repeating over and over and over again forever. So that makes it a repeating decimal, which is rational. Pi stands for a number that keeps on going and never stops. It is 3.14 and then it keeps on going. There's no pattern to it. And that's going to make it an irrational number. If I were to put 27, the square root of 27, into my calculator, I would also get a decimal that does not stop and does not repeat. That makes it irrational. Number 13, 2.135765. So I'm not seeing any kind of pattern in these numbers. And this dot, dot, dot means that it continues on. So it's not terminating, it keeps on going, no pattern. So this is another irrational. Does not stop, does not repeat. Number 14, we said if it can be written as a fraction, and that is a fraction, so this would be rational. If I turn that into a decimal, it would be 0 0.75. Number 15, well that's on my list over here. Square root of 36 is six. And six is a whole number, so that's gonna be rational. Number 16, if I were to just focus on that square root of 10, this is different than 8 because 8, the 50 divided by 2 was both underneath the square root, so I can go ahead and simplify that first. But on number 16, the 10 is inside the square root, but the 2 is not, so we can't put those together. But square root of 10 is not in my list, so that's going to be an irrational number. So any irrational multiplier divided by anything is going to stay irrational. You can always put it in your calculator and check and see what that decimal is going to be. All right, the last thing we're going to do is estimating our values. And we're going to use our chart to help us do that. So when we're estimating, we want to know approximately what that number is going to be. All right, so if we're estimating the square root of 30. So if I look in my chart off to the left, I'm going to look for where does 30 fall? Well, 30 falls here in between the square root of 25 and square root of 36. Square root of 30 would be right in between 25 and 36. So 25 would be the smaller side. 36 is a bigger side. And this makes it between Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. So that number is going to be between 5 and 6 somewhere. So 5 point something. And because 30 is pretty close to right in between 25 and 36, it's probably right in the middle, about 5.5, .5, somewhere around there. Number 18. Square root of 15. So 15 would fall over here on my list off to the left. Oh, no, it would not. It would go up one more because 15 is between 9 and 16, so it would fall right here. So square root of 9 is a smaller one. Square root of 16 is the next one bigger. Square root of 9 is 3. And square root of 16 is 4. And since 15 is right in between here, the number number is going to be between 3 and 4 somewhere, so 3 point something. And it's awful close. 15 is awful close to the 16, so it's going to be closer to the 4, so maybe 3.8, 3.9, something around there. So between 3 and 4. And our last one, 70. I'm going to go over to my list again. 
and 70 falls between 64 and 81. So 64 is the smaller perfect square, and 81 is a bigger perfect square. Square root of 64 was 8, and square root of 81 was 9. So since 70 is between 64 and 81, then the decimal for that has to be between 8 and 9. So 8 point some number, and then we can tell which ones are closer to 64 or 81 and kind of get an idea of where that might fall. And then if there's any other notes you want to make yourself off to the left, things to remember. Um, and for the summary, we can just write things we want to make sure we remember. So I would say that irrational. And we can write it in our own language, whatever helps you remember. It does not stop. And does not repeat. Any other notes you might want to help remind yourself?